Welcome back to Real Real Reviews. This is Cody Williams, and we're here to talk about the movie Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. It is the second movie of the series and based on the respective book of Harry Potter's second year of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. This sequel picks up immediately afterwards the first movie. Harry Potter spends the rest of his remainder of the summer with his awful aunt and uncle, the Dursleys, and as he gets closer to the start of the school for him, a house elf named Dobby shows up and tries to prevent Harry Potter from ever returning to Hogwarts. Harry ignores the house elf's warning and goes on with his arranged schedule. When he arrives at Hogwarts, strange and terrible things start happening. Harry Potter can hear voices within the walls of Hogwarts. Muggle-born students are being attacked, and there is blood written on a wall, warning that the Chamber of Secrets has been opened. Now Harry and his friends must go on this quest to uncover the truth about the Chamber of Secrets before the school is closed and before any lives are taken. When I first saw the first movie, The Sorcerer's Stone, back in 2001, I was enchanted. I, it swallowed me whole into a world of magic I've always dreamed of living in. I was a fascinated 11-year-old at the time. I watched the movie repeatedly and couldn't wait for the sequel that would release the following year, Chamber of Secrets. And that came along in November of 2002. I didn't think the first movie could ever be outdone, but Chamber of Secrets did a fantastic job of being a better movie. The first movie, The Sorcerer's Stone, it did a great job of world building and introducing the audience to all the characters. However, Chamber of Secrets decided to move away from the innocent tone from the first movie to more of a darker and more sinister tone in this new chapter. And it worked out very well in this case, as it laid a good foundation for the upcoming movies that got even more sinister as time went on. We get glimpses at new creatures such as the Mandrakes, House Elves, Cornish Pixies, Acromangelas, and a giant basilisk. If you have a big arachnophobia like me, the Acromangelus will for sure send shivers down your spine. The creature design in this movie is just really spectacular. It was neat having practical effects, particularly with the use of an animatronic and the majority, majority for the creatures while having some great CGI to add to the effect. It's a great mixture of practical and CGI effects, and it doesn't go totally overboard with CGI. When CGI is used in the movie, it looks great for the most part, and it doesn't look too ridiculous, which is actually kind of nice. This is the second and final movie to be directed by Christopher Columbus for the Harry Potter series, as he also worked on Sorcerer's Stone. I really enjoy the direction that Chamber of Secrets has. It has a nice cohesive flow and it doesn't feel like two hours and 40 minutes long. I was enticed throughout the whole film and there is pretty much no dull moment in this movie whatsoever. It's a riveting new chapter that helps develop Harry, Ron, and Hermione's characters. Chamber of Secrets also has the last performance from Richard Harris as the headmaster of Hogwarts, Albus Dumbledore, before he passed away and had to be replaced by Michael Gambon for the remainder of the movies. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy Michael Gambon's lively portrayal from the later movies, but I for one enjoy Richard Harris's portrayal of the character a tad more. I feel that his portrayal adds more nuance to the character of Albus Dumbledore, and it shows. With Kenneth Branagh's quirky performance as Professor Gilroy Lockhart, it adds another layer of fun to the movie. His interactions with Harry Potter and Professor Snape in this movie are just really great. He's really an interesting character that is one of the main standouts in this movie, along with the addition of the Moni Myrtle character. Shirley Henderson is spectacular as Moni Myrtle, who is this undead spirit that is often seen in the bathrooms of Hogwarts. There are so many interesting characters in this movie, and how they develop throughout the story is just really fascinating. 
This movie has one of my favorite Quidditch matches in the whole series. Especially with a rogue bludger flying after Harry Potter as he's trying to catch the Golden Snitch. It's really an exciting scene. Even with the encounter with Aragog and the final showdown with the giant basilisk, it really makes the movie even more exhilarating than it already is. I do admire how this movie contains some mystery as Harry Potter and his friends as they're trying to solve the sinister plot with a Chamber of Secrets in the castle. I'm a big sucker for a good mystery solving movie and it makes for a fun adventure. I also appreciate that this movie doesn't deviate too far away from the book. I mean, some minor things from the book are omitted, for instance, the headless hunt with a ghost and some other things I can't think off the top of my head. I need to read the books again because they're really that good. Overall, the movie itself is fantastic and it's one of my favorite book to movie adaptations. It's not my favorite out of the bunch, but it's still a worthy and welcome addition to the series. I give this movie an A. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Keep up with my real reviews.